Hello, everyone. My name is Lucy. I'm not a native English speaker. For many years, I was confused for a question: how to fix. I can understand, but I cannot speak English. If you have the same confusion, you are at the right place. Let me share my personal experience. I learned English for many years, from middle school to high school, and during college, I even passed the English exams, such as TOEFL and IELTS. But when I start my graduate school in the U.S., I find out very strangely, I can understand most of the lectures, but I cannot talk with a complete sentence. It has been pretty painful because I just shy away from very daily topics in the grocery stores, in the restaurants, and etc. Even sometimes I need to think twice how to answer. How are you? Excuse me. At that moment, I feel really painful. I was so confused of my English capability. So if you have the situation, I'm here with you. Let's start with this one: passive and active language skill. As we see, a huge number of countries have English as a mandatory subject in school. But according to my travel experience and the people I met, counterintuitively, most of the people in these countries cannot speak English. Because I was in the same situation before, I can find that they can understand me, but cannot reply with a complete sentence. So you are not alone, and we need to twitch this English speaking a bit to meet the speaking goal. First, let's divide the English study into two skills: active skills and passive skills. Passive language skills refer to the ability to comprehend and understand the language, such as listening and reading. In contrast, the active skills involves producing, such as writing and speaking. So in school, language learning often focuses on develop passive skills, such as reading, listening, maybe a little writing. But you know what? This is the same language, but active skills do not come naturally. It requires practice and repetition in speaking and writing. So here comes my first tip: is to practice more active skill, or to say output skill, rather than the passive skill. We can also say the input skill. Of course, the language input is very important. And congratulations! If you watch this video, you have already figured out most of it. It will be pretty fast to master the language for you. Be confident. One of the good way is to find an environment to start speaking English. But if you don't have this condition, and here are some ways you can practice along. For example, writing. You can start by writing short articles, write a journal, and also write short social media content such as Twitter and Instagram, and practice your grammar by writing some sentences. The next thing is to paraphrase. Back to my time in China, preparing the TOEFL exam, I do self-talk to describe the things in life. And once I watch a movie, I paraphrase them in my own words in English. When I watch some social media content, I try to paraphrase them in English. That really helps us to use the language and develop our active skills, even if you don't have anyone to talk with. The next thing I feel very interesting is to make the social media content. This has many benefits. For example, when you involve in the English social media, you can get the most updated information and what's up to now in the world. And another perk is you record your talking, and when you edit the video, you listen to the recording, and you can identify the areas that need to be improved. It's pretty easy for me to open my mouth because I know I can just cut out the unwanted clips and mistakes. That makes me feel more confident. Once you practice with those tips but still feel slow, here is my second tip. I make the title as "Remove the Hurdles from Traditional Listening." During my English study, I got a lot of things like rules, grammar, and translation. It gave me an impression that if I want to speak this language, I need to cross all the hurdles to start to speak. But this is not necessarily true, as language is not a hard science. It's more than a set of rules, but a means of communication. We can see it as the rules are not super important, but of course it will help. We need a set of more comprehensive skills, such as listening, speaking, and etc., to master the language. One of the mindset I had is I raise my mind just like a child, which is like a small child picking their mother tongue. We don't learn about rules, grammar, and any translations. Of course, we get the speaking skill much more natively by immersing into the environment. 
We focus on the things we are curious about and the ideas we want to convey, rather than the language we use. Also, by embracing the imperfection and mistakes, we can learn from our errors and improve our English skills. So, are you ready to talk with someone in the real life? Here comes our next tip to find a group that supports you. Let me go back to my experience. Even after I living in an English-speaking country, I still shy away from the real speaking for a few months. At the same time, I often self-blame myself. Why you are not seizing any opportunities to practice, but you are more like hiding in a corner and do nothing. I feel that speaking with a native speaker can be very intimidating because I feel they can speak so fast. But actually, when I think about that later, they are a really kind person. How to find a support group? One of the easy way I can think about is to find a tutor, especially if they don't speak your native language. This is a good idea to practice regularly and get your mistakes fixed at the same time. You can feel more confident than speaking in real life because you know they are tutor. And also, you can try some tutor that do not speak your native language. This is my experience when talking with people who speak my native language, and I have more tendency to switch back to our native language when we are correcting some mistakes. So maybe you can try some tutors that not speaking the native language of you. The second thing I think is to join some language clubs. Personally, I feel less shy speaking English with foreigners. This is more like we are at the same stage and we can understand each other, and we are very likely to have some more similarities. You can feel free to join some language club and groups, which can be online or offline. Learn from others and getting to know others at the same stage of you. And last but not the least, you can definitely speak with native speakers. Remember that people are very kind. When I first move into an English-speaking country, I can only speak English very slowly. Yeah, I never get any criticism from others. Instead, they usually say your English is very good, and even people say some mean words. I mean, not constructive criticism. This is not your fault. Just let it go. We can also think about it like this: when we meet someone speaking our native language, they are very polite and willing to communicate. I would really love to help them, and the imperfection in their speaking in their language is very minimal. And remember that practice makes perfect. The more you speak English, the more confident and fluent you will become. How about your journey to speak a foreign language? What are your ideas and advices? Comment down below and share with us. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe, and comment down below to let me know so that I can make more of the similar content. Feel free to also share this video to someone who needs it. Thank you for listening. I will see you again soon.